So in this video, although it will be related to the main subjects that I keep on exploring, this will be a, a bit of an unusual video because I will share a certain story and I'll, be, I'll leave you to make conclusions by yourself. And the story is related to a time when I was doing Bing Chun. So back in the first years of training Aikido, I started to feel that something is missing there, like the striking or the sparring. And uh, I wanted to find a solution. That's where I went to Bing Chun. As, as, as right now, I see that wasn't a great choice, but it made sense, be sense back then. So while I was training Aikido, I went on the other days to train uh, the basics of Bing Chun. In the end, I did it for about two years. Maybe I was, I was training intensively for about a year, a year and a half. Uh, but then I was still sticking to it for about two years. And the story that I will share have taken place through those two years. So the first school uh, that I went to was called Ding Tsun. So Ding T-S-U-N. And there was an instructor coming from, uh, I was living in a different city and actually that instructor was coming from Shule, from the city I live in right now. So it's about a, of an hour drive and he was teaching classes two times per week. I quickly became very enthusiastic about it and because I could train only one time per week, I started talking with the, the people who were training there already. I said, you know, let's go meet up together. Let's go meet up together. Let's train separately. Teach me what you were taught. So I, was, I started training off the mat with the group uh, quite often and also obviously training the regular classes. But the thing is, the more I was training, the more stories from the instructor we heard that there's this other Ding Chun school. So that, that was, the school was Ding Chun. So it's C-H-U-N. And we were told how bad it is, how fake it is, how, how not real it is. We were told a lot of stories about how evil they are. But nevertheless, one of the group members that I trained with, uh, he actually contacted that group of Ding Chun. And they had said to him that the Ding Chun organization is really bad, really fake, really lousy. And, and he believed them. So he started this project to invite the Ding Chun school and help, help it start in, in our city, the city we were living in. And that happened. So the main master of that school, the main director or organizer came and taught a seminar. And in that seminar, he was telling how bad the Ding Chun organization is about the Grand Master, that he's fake, it's all about money. So we heard a lot of negative stories. It was like part of the seminar was about the negativity, negativity of that other school. Then, as funny as it was, uh, the, the school that we officially left, the Deng Sun, the, the instructor from there called and he tried to talk us out of joining the Deng Chun. He said, no, they're bad, they're fake, they're all about money. So for me, that already started to feel a bit funky. But nevertheless, my friends were enthusiastic about this new, new, new organization. They, they sent uh, an instructor to always teach us uh, in, in the city we lived in. So we started training and we trained quite a bit. And eventually we went to a seminar, uh, which, was, which was taught for, by one of the more head instructors. And in the seminar, uh, not, during, not, not necessarily during the class itself, but especially after the class, all this, there were a lot of students from all, all, all over the country. And most of the talks we had was about how bad the other organization was. So I started to feel that that's a bit ridiculous and, and something is off here. And uh, eventually I got sick of it and, and I left the Ving Chun organization, partly because of that whole crap they were giving to each other. But now the aftermath, the interesting part of the story is that years later, uh, when I already was running my dojo, uh, I checked the website of the main master of the Ving Chun organization and uh, even also, even back in the seminar, I heard stories of betrayal that, you know, this instructor betrayed this instructor, he left and he's fake and etc. And then years later, I don't know, maybe uh, eight years later, I checked his website and on the website there, there was his photo, you know, he's such a great guy, this and that. And there, there were these other instructors under him with, with photos of them. And in their, instead of their background it was written, this instructor, has betrayed us and like literally the word betrayed was used. So this, this instructor betrayed us and he left us and he's on a fake path now. Don't trust him, don't go to him. And for me, the first thing that I thought, if people keep leaving you, probably something is wrong with you, not with those people. And obviously there might've been a dynamic between the two sides, but something was just off in that organization. But it also started me on reflecting about Aikido. This is not uncommon in Aikido too. Uh, maybe not as hardcore as, as what I saw there, and uh, maybe not as direct because Aikido is officially the art of peace. So we, we, many Aikido instructors, they try to maintain that peaceful, calm, nice, uh, nice image. And that doesn't allow uh, to talk so much crap about each other. 
Uh, but nevertheless, there are a lot of stories and I witnessed a lot of separation and division in Aikido. Uh, each school claiming they are better than the other school, that they're fake, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, and then uh, in one of the conversations I had with my BJJ friend who introduced me to BJJ, we talked a lot about martial arts, a lot about what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. And when I told the stories about Aikido being so separated to my BJJ friend, uh, he said, he, he thought a lot about that, and after a couple of days he came to me and said, you know, probably that's because there's no competition in Aikido. And I realized that's such a good point, because uh, in, in my understanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, in my understanding, in a BJJ school, if you claim you're the best and other schools suck, very quickly you'll have to prove it, and either somebody will either you'll prove yourself right or you, or somebody will prove you wrong and most of, most likely somebody will prove you wrong because there's always going to be someone better than you and that's the part of BGD that I love the humility that you, you are forced into being humble uh, but even in MMA too you know you can't claim you're the best because you'll have to prove it and there's very clear easy ways to prove it but in Aikido as much as Ding Chen there's no way to prove it there's it's there's it's such an easy path to go around saying you are the best and not having any ways to check it. There's no quality control in Aikido. You can go, and go around saying, I am very good, they're very bad, they say all the same thing about you, and, and there's no place we can come together and see who's right. So it makes uh, it gives this kind of a scapegoat to be, to be a, a douchebag about that, to, to, to make ludicrous claims, to go bad about others. And that's the part which I became concerned about with the question of, does the way Aikido, Ding Chen, or other traditional martial arts which lack pressure testing, uh, does it inherently in its system have something which gives space for this bad mentality of people, which maybe should be changed? Nevertheless, before I leave you with this question, I'll just say the very last bit of the story. Then a few days later, me and my BGD friend, we met together, and he, he looked at me and said, you know, I thought about that whole Aikido separation once more, and I came to a different conclusion. I was like, okay, so what's, what's the conclusion? And he said, you know, I think it's because they're human. And I thought, that's an awesome statement too. Yeah, we're, we're all human beings. We, we all have our dark sides. And, and there's some truth to that. Maybe that's true. That's why I'm addressing this question too and asking, did you experience that in your styles of martial arts? Did you experience that in BJJ, in MMA? Uh, I'm curious to know. Personally, I still hold on to the position that I do feel that no pressure testing can lead and enforce this bad quality, although it's a human quality can enforce it, but still, I'm looking forward to hear your opinion about the matter. As always, before I leave you, uh, I remind you that if you're interested in the projects in the modernization of Aikido and looking at these problems uh, and solving them, uh, feel free to check the Patreon page where you can decide to support the channel and give it a boost so more, more practical stuff could happen. I could, I could directly visit some instructors and film some videos with them uh, looking at these questions. It should be exciting, so check the Patreon page. And uh, otherwise, I'll, as always, I'll leave you right here and I'll see you on the virtual mat again soon.